Now, with tensions growing across the Strait of Taiwan, China has reacted angrily to Lithuania opening a trade office in the self-ruled island's capital, Taipei. Growing trade closeness between the EU Baltic state and Taiwan has raised hackles in Beijing. China considers Taiwan part of its own territory and has threatened to seize it by force. So it was angry when a Taiwanese fund said it would invest in Litlit, a Lithuanian laser company, and more investments are on the way. All right, for more, let's bring in DW correspondent Tso Tsang Han in Taipei. So tell us more about this Taiwanese investment in Lithuania that's now angering Beijing. Well, I want to give you a little bit of background in the beginning. Um, the Lithuanian Trade Representative Office opened in Taiwan on Monday, and soon afterwards, Taiwan announced its 3.5 million euros investment in Litalit. It's a Lithuanian femtosecond lasers manufacturer. By the end of this year, Taiwan um, expects to invest 10 million euros in Lithuania. So if we look at these two places, Taiwan and Lithuania, both relatively small, but key economies in the international supply chain, most um, notably it's um, Lithuania's laser industry and Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing. So Taiwan also promises to help Lithuanian companies develop um, the semiconductor industry by sharing relevant technologies. This is what Taiwan called strengthening the supply chain of democracy. As for Beijing, mm. it criticized Taiwan's ruling party for colluding with external forces to provoke independence as they view Taiwan as part of China. And we can expect more conflicts like this in the future when the two sides have such different political ideologies. And amid this investment, uh, there's yet another warning coming uh, from China's communist leadership. What is Taiwan going to do about it? Well, firstly, we have to understand that no matter on imports or exports, mainland China, together with Hong Kong, has been Taiwan's largest trading partner for the past 10 years. There are also more than 1 million Taiwanese people doing business in China. It's easy for Beijing to cut the livelihood of Taiwanese um, industries uh, relying heavily on its huge market. We have seen a few Taiwanese products from fruits like pineapple to a kind of fish called um, groupers. They are banned because of political reasons. So now Taiwan is trying to diversify its supply chain and expand into more markets in order not to um, be over-reliant on the Chinese market. And more and more Taiwanese talents and companies are moving out from mainland China to new markets um, in say, Southeast Asia. And we'll see the trend will go on for quite a while. So Tsang Han in Taipei, thank you. Now, as our correspondent just pointed out there, uncertainties created by COVID-0 and rising geopolitical tensions between Taipei and Beijing are prompting a growing number of Taiwanese companies to look for places to do business outside of China. DW's Pao Wang reports. All kinds of footwear are displayed on the shelf in the showroom. They are all produced by a Taiwanese shoe manufacturer in the city of Taichung. One in five pairs of football boots globally comes from the company. Currently, we are producing Nike's Mercurial football boots, which will be seen at the World Cup. Another product is Predator football boots from Adidas. The new generation will be unveiled at the World Cup too. Making football boots is complicated. It involves raw materials from many different suppliers, labor and shipping. But the pandemic has led to global supply chain disruptions. Clients understand the situation is challenging. They reschedule our product orders. When major cities are in lockdown, we have to make arrangements because many materials are imported from China. After China ramped up tensions with Taiwan, it made Taiwanese businessmen like Patrick Chen and companies based in the mainland China feel like they're walking on the fine line. A survey conducted by Center for Strategic and International Study shows that most Taiwanese firms doing business in mainland China have moved or plan to move some manufacturing or sourcing elsewhere. The survey also reflects that military conflict was a leading concern even before China launched military drills. China's President Xi Jinping has secured a historical third term as Communist Party leader. Chun Li, deputy CEO at Zhonghua Institution for Economic Research, believes it's a wake-up call for businesses. 
Most businesses in mainland China will follow a so-called China Plus One strategy. In other words, they will maintain a certain amount of production capacity in China and look for another location to set up a new production line outside China. With low labor costs and trade agreements with many countries, Southeast Asia has become a popular location for international firms in recent years. I don't want a war, and I've told many people, have you ever been cut by a knife? If so, then bullets hurt even more. And I think a benevolent ruler or an entrepreneur should always think about the next step instead of only focusing on the present. Patrick Chen says the factory in Indonesia should be ready by 2025. Meanwhile, his next step is also looking forward to expanding production lines to Europe.